I think it's exceeded expectations. Um, we seem to be moving along a lot faster than, than we planned on, but that's because we can. Everything's been going smooth, and um, we had a healthy year for calves during calving season. Um, when we worked them this year, everything, the vet checked out, everything looked healthy and, um, and seemed to be going well, and we didn't have any injuries or deaths, and everything was uh, low stress during the working procedures. And when we moved them out in this pasture, then they just settled right in and, and seemed like they're at home here. And every cow that was pregnant had her calf and had no problems. And, um, you know, uh, we didn't have any issues, you know, to take a step back. Or, you know, we had calving and then we had the, the rut season um, later in the fall. And then we, we worked the animals in November and everything went really well. So all in all, uh, you know, as we strive for our low stress, handling techniques I think they're really paying off and and um, other folks that have been here and other veterinarians in the area that have uh, one helped us with working the bison um, also said the same thing said it's um, some of the best working of the animals that they've seen. What's surprising is, is their social behavior we knew they had a strong social hierarchy and behavior but um, how social the animal is and, and actually how smart they do remember very well and um, I think that surprised me. I was a little skeptical, um, but they have a social hierarchy and they listen. They listen. They're in their little chain of command, and and, and that um, as you take an animal out of that, there there is a quick disruption. As you if you were to move an animal out of there, just if it um, stepped away from the herd, or if we we had it in the corral system and the rest of the herd walked away, you could see the social structure. The animals would get nervous. So we actually, we feel they were in this um, pasture uh, longer than we wanted to, but it was because we were moving fence around um, through, through some other projects we had ongoing. So now after the fences are all moved and where we want them, um, initially we've seen some great response, um, but that's part of our Andrew Cave and um, set up a long-term monitoring uh, plan and, and we're using that as a standard operating procedure, so time will tell. You know, I hate to I hate to give you a quick response. You know, initial judgment. We like what we see. We know we grazed it um, too heavy for too long, but that was just due to um, everything else, all the other ongoings of the trust. But uh, now we we really don't see any problems in our future with that. We're going back. There are 44 wallows um, in that pasture alone, and I don't know if Jacob told you that, but Andy has set up um, some measuring plots so the next growing season we'll be able to. Um, monitor and see the response to those wallows. So, but those are the first wallows, obviously, on our property, you know, in 100 years. Something we're, we've added just from, we were hoping to do this, but I think um, working on genetics with the herd, um, really looking at it for overall um, benefit to the entire bison species, you know, by working with different partnerships. And as we look forward, we'll be able to move some animals either you know, as we acquire more animals or uh, move animals off the property, I think that's really, I think we're really benefiting um, the bison herd, uh, you know, on a, on a lifetime scale. Looking forward to, to putting a herd out. It'll be our own herd up at the Nature Visitor Center um, this spring sometime. Uh, we did work, Randy Miller, we had, those bison were on loan uh, through Randy Miller as a, you know, a partnership uh, we had worked out with him. and, and uh, Going into this year, we're hoping that it's our whole herd up there. There's still four animals over there right now that are his, but then we're updating um, part of our corral over up by the Nature and Visitor Center, and then we'll have some animals out there. We're hoping to grow the herd, you know, um, working with other partners this year, and, and uh, we're hoping for somewhere around 80 animals as, as their carrying capacity from a conservation um, management um, discussions that we had among staff. So we're hoping the carrying capacity around 80 mature animals and whether we reach that this year or next year, we're hoping to attain that in the near future. Back to our monitoring transects and uh, see how that's affecting our habitat because that is first and foremost, you know, we're here to protect the habitat. We don't want to find any overutilization specific to grazing because um, we definitely care about, you know, the small mammals that are out there, the birds that come through, uh, butterflies. Um, we're we're going to look at everything as a whole. So. So it's not, not just specific to one thing, you know, it's going to be vegetation response, small mammal response, um, uh, bird, grass and nesting bird response, and, uh, you know, insects, butterflies are going to be a big one, pollinator species, you know, we have a monitoring 
that's part of the monitoring plan too and we'll get feedback from all those to help us make future decisions.